Hello my friend, this is Edouard. In today's video, we're going to talk about the EOQ, the economic order quantity. I'm going to explain to you how to optimize the quantity you want to order and also the frequency. The question is, do you need to order, for example, once a year, but having way too much stock to, to hold? Or maybe to order every day like these very cute cats. But it's going to be exhausting. It's going to cost you a lot in terms of transaction costs. So I'm going to help you to find the perfect balance between holding costs and transaction costs. And of course, as always, I'm going to give you a very specific example with Nike issues in Excel. So we're going to calculate and the, the objective is for you to be able to implement this formula at the end of this video. Okay, so before jumping to the formula, this uh, principle was invented by Ford Whitman Harris in 1930, the more than 100 years ago, and before consultant in the manufacturing and industry uh, process, uh, Mr. Wilson uh, was the one who really applied it uh, to optimize this transaction and holding costs. So what is the EOQ goal? The EOQ goal is to find the perfect balance between the holding costs. Most of, most of the, the costs is obviously the inventory and the transaction costs. And the idea is really to find the balance between these two and to combine as well also with the, the safety stock. I'm going to talk about it at the end of this video. So if I go back to the holding cost, obviously the biggest is your order. The more the more inventory you will have and the more cost you will have to carry. So th that's why we have this linear curve. On the other side, if you need to process one order every year, you will have much less cost than if you need, if you need to process one order every day, for example. And at the end, we need to sum these two costs to find the total cost. And in this curve, have an inflection point and this is the this balance point that we are looking for and this this balance point is called the EOQ the economic order quantity to find this balance point we have this EOQ formula or the Wilson formula you will see it's not that complex it's super simple with example and in this formula we have EOQ equal the root square of two times the demand multiplied by the transaction cost divided by the holding cost. So I'm going to give you one very specific example right now. For the demand, let's take this Nike shoes. We're going to get back into Excel uh, with more details just after. But let's say like your your quantity forecasted for, for a period, let's say one year, you're going to sell 12,000 pairs of these Nike shoes size 9.5 uh, for the next 12 months. OK, so this is your demand. Next you have the holding cost. So what is the holding cost? Is the cost of holding inventory for the same period. And in this specific case, it will be one year. So the annual demand is 12,000 units. Then you have the purchasing price. So how much is your products from the, the factory, for example. You can also obviously include all the transport to your warehouse, if you have a warehouse. Then we do have the annual unit cost of storage. I like to use, you can use in a co like unit cost or percentage, I like to use percentage, it's easier. You can check with your finance department if you don't have the cost. Then you can uh, include the insurance expenses in percentage as well. Uh, the cost of money, like how much is your money if you need to borrow money at the bank, let's say 2.5%. Obviously, if you are in a very specific country, it could be 5-10% per, per year. You, then we have the, what we call the inventory gap or the, the theft cost. If you basically, it's all the, the stock that disappeared after inventory check. And you also have the promotion cost. If what is your average promotion cost for this kind of products? You don't have to do it per product. You can do it per category. Uh, I only took 1.5%, but obviously it will be much more if you have a very, very trendy uh, fashion brands. So at the end, we have a total cost in dollars, $2.85. You can also use, use it in percentage, 9.5% of your purchasing price. And this is the holding cost you're going to apply in the formula. Then we have the transaction cost. What is the transaction cost? Is all the time and the money you spend to process one order. So to be honest, it's not that easy to calculate. You have two ways to do it for me, or you calculate what is the average time uh, for one order and also the, the cost involved. Or you can also use, okay, what is who is responsible to process order? What is, the, what is the total cost of this team, of these people? Maybe it could be maybe 30% of one team. And then you just divide for one year and how many orders do you have during one year? This is, this is different ways. I'm going to use this one. And in this very specific example, we're going to use what is the hourly um, rate for the person responsible for that. You need to uh, like order the, you have the ordering process, then you have the order validation if someone has to approve that. Uh, like when I was supply chain director, I had to approve <laughs> the order sometimes, which was very painful for me. Uh, then 
uh, hours you have the communication with your suppliers you have the follow-up by email or phone you need to also receive the products you have the inspection of the products you have the um, um, everything related to putting into storage and uh, maybe you need to spend time for supplier payment uh, of course it's better if everything is almost automatic but in most of the companies you need to spend time and money to make this happening and the more you have ordered the more we have cost for the company in this specific example it's about two hours and 42 dollars to process one order then we so we do have the demand 12,000 12, quantities we have the transaction cost we have the holding cost we can now apply the formula quite simple and the formula is 2 times 12,000 multiplied by 42.5 divided by 2.85 and the results is 598 I like to round up to like like big numbers because when you process orders you don't want to order like 598 so let's say for this specific example it will be 600 quantity and then if you want to know the number of orders per year it's very simple you divide the demand by the EOQ 12,000 by 600 and you will have 20 orders every year for these specific products. You can also check the, the order frequency. The order frequency will be the, the period divided by how many orders. And in this specific case, it will be one order every 18 days in a very stable demand. I'm going to talk about the limitation of this formula just after. Okay, so at the end, it's very simple. We have this example. You have the EOQ of 600. When you go down, you're going to consume all these products. You're going to order another 600 quantities. You also need to consider the, the lead time uh, to make sure you're not out of stock before uh, getting to zero. But I'm going to talk about it in my next video uh, talking about safety stock. This is just to give you an idea. And now we're going to calculate another example into Excel. Okay, so now in Excel, I really recommend you to download this Excel to practice with me and then apply to your own products. It's very important to make sure you, you get the formula. Uh, we have the first example we were talking about just before with the annual demand. You can change all the yellow parameters. For example, now we have this formula with the square root and the formula that we were applying two times the demand multiply by the D31, by the transaction cost divided by the holding cost. So this is the formula. It's very, very simple. You can obviously change if you want to, for example, to say no, I have 20,000 quantities now and my promotion cost is not 1.5 but 5% and you will see it will automatically uh, update the formulas okay so it's interesting to see like the more like the more important is your holding cost for example let's say oh now the cost of money is going because of inflation is going to 10% it will tell you okay you need to reduce your economic order quantity and you need to have more um, you need to increase your frequency to reduce the inventory cost for example so I recommend you to play with these parameters. You don't have to look for perfection for all of them, but just start simple and then optimize when you, you get it, okay? So this is, that was the first example. Now in the second example, in this fancy uh, Nike shoes, uh, red ones, I'm not a big fan of this color, <laughs> to be honest. The annual demand is only 1,000 versus 12,000. The purchasing price is a bit more expensive because I guess they have less volume. We're gonna use the same percentage for the holding cost let's say that this is the same cost for like, basically everything but the, the only cost is more important why because the purchasing price is more important then we go back to the transaction cost i don't see any change between these two so we're going to keep the same value and at the end the economic order quantity for this specific example is only 100 and let's say 150 quantities um, each time you want to order and it will be only six it will be seven orders per year per year it's basically like one order every two months if you have a very stable demand. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Please download this file. You can apply this file to multiple items like this ones. And then you can also apply it to your full uh, database. Uh, this is, for example, one of my Excel files from my uh, inventory management uh, program expert. And you see like you apply this formula and then you can see quickly how to optimize in the, in the meantime, your cost, but also your inventory costs and also protect your, your service for your customer. Okay, so now let's talk about the limitation of the EOQ formula because this is not a perfect formula that was invented more than 100 years ago. The first one is the fact that it does not consider like the, the demand is can be inconsistent. So in this specific case, it will be like the same demand every month or every week. Um, but in the reality, like for example, for Nike shoes, you will probably sell more uh, products, for example, for Christmas or for Black Friday. And yeah, this is one limitation. I would, I would just uh, tell you that 
this is okay. You don't have to respect exactly the order frequency. Sometimes you will order twice more than the quantity uh, necessary, but this, that will give you at least the right direction to optimize your, your replenishment. The second one is the inconsistent of price. Uh, for, for a few companies and factories, the more you buy, the, the cheaper is the product, for example, for this specific example. And you could also include this uh, threshold in the formula. It will be a much more complex formula. So I won't do it today, but this is possible. If you think this is too complex for you, just keep the average price for the, the average quantities. And that will be much better than probably what you are doing uh, today. Then we do also have inconsistent costs uh, regarding, for example, the transport, the warehouse, the storage. We do also have, we have fixed costs and variable costs. Uh, once again, this is not perfect, but you can use the average cost uh, for storage, for transport, and to have an idea of what will be uh, the, um, the ab optimized average cost for, uh, for every specific uh, details. Then we also do have inconsistent lead time. I'm going to talk about this one, especially in the safety stock, how to cover from, uh, from lead time. Uh, but yeah, this is once again not perfection. I would take the average lead time uh, to make sure that we have, you have something relevant for your formula. And of course, we do not have safety stock. So the perfection would say like if you have like a very stable demand of if your forecast accuracy is perfect, you don't need safety stock, but this is not the reality. And most of the time we need to protect from this. And that's why I really recommend to combine the EOQ and the safety stock to make sure that we can avoid this, this kind of uh, drama for your <laughs> customers and uh, suppliers. So I'm going to cover these subjects in the, my next video. We're going to talk about the six best formula for your safety stock with example in Excel again. So please make sure to subscribe to make sure you, you will see this video very soon. And my conclusion of this is just to start simple now and optimize later. I like this quote from Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. If you're waiting for the, the perfection and 90% of all the, the information, you won't take decision fast enough and you won't optimize fast enough. So I really recommend you to start immediately. My action plan for you is to download this Excel and the other video to calculate the EOQ, then to compare with your current settings and adjust major deviation, especially on your 2080, like the most important products in terms of sales and in terms of inventory. And then you can review and adjust your production batches size, your orders, and even your minimum order quantity, who are most of the time related to this um, EOQ uh, quantity. So thank you for watching today. If you want to know more about inventory management, I really recommend you to watch my next video, the safety stock with the best formula. I'm going to cover as well the ABC XYZ analysis. It's coming very soon, so subscribe. And also you can check how to optimize your inventory quickly. I'm going to share 11 solutions and also how to track your performance because if you can cannot track your inventory level and service, it's very difficult to optimize your, your supply chain. So I'll check all my videos. And if you want to go to the next level regarding inventory optimization, I'm hosting a new free workshop, how to reduce your inventory and your shortages. I'm going to share with you how to face this uncertainty regarding the demand and the suppliers. And I'm going to share as well the certain parameters you need to master uh, to optimize your inventory and make sure that your customers are happy and have the right products at the right time. So if you like this, you can check below the video. I have all the links to, to join my next workshop. And don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you're going to see my next tutorials on YouTube. Thank you so much. And I see you for another tutorial. Mm -hmm.